Good morning, folks. Thanks again for joining me today. Today, we are going to talk about logarithms. So, uh, other than log jokes, what the heck is a logarithm? Um, it's kind of an old-timey tool that we use to solve exponential equations. And we still use it to solve exponential equations because our calculators are kind of bad at doing it. Uh, and so this is the tool that we're going to use. Um, the secret about a logarithm, let's look at that word again. The secret about a logarithm uh, is that it's nothing more than an exponent. If you look at the word logarithm, all it means is logical log numbers, arithmetic. So the word just means logical numbers or smart numbers. Um, you might not think there's any logarithms involved in this uh, third power of two that you see right here, but there are, because this third power of two is really broken into two pieces. The two is called the base. That's familiar to you. Uh, the three, though, we usually call the exponent, but another term for it, another way to think about it, is as the logarithm. So in this case, it's just sort of synonymous with the exponent in this expression. So we said that logarithms are really just the same as exponents when you have a power, like 4 to the 7th power, or the 4th 7th power of 4. So uh, in English, we might ask you, if the base is 4, what is the logarithm of 4 to the 7th? And since a logarithm is a power, the answer that this is looking for is just 7. We're reading the power out of there, the exponent out of the power, uh, and reporting it. But this sentence right here is really awkward to write. We're not going to write that sentence every time we want to ask this question. So instead, it's going to be written like this. We're going to say log base 4 of 4 to the 7th. So the pieces of this, there's the word log. This 4 is the base, and everything in the parentheses here is called the argument. That's kind of a fancy term that we're not going to need, but if you ever need to tell the base from like the thing inside the parentheses, it's called the argument. Um, and this, log base 4 of 4 to the 7th, is asking exactly the same question as right here. So what we'll write in math is that log base 4 of 4 to the 7th equals... So, that's the mathematical way to say the thing that we just set up here. With that in mind, here are one, two, three practice problems that you should pause the video right now and attempt on your own. I'm back. Did you pause the video? If you didn't, you really should pause the video right now and solve the problems on your own. All right, if you solve the problems, the answers are 8, 5, and 2. Um, each of those is the exponent in this expression, and notice that these are possible because the bases all matched in the problems that I gave you. So whenever you have a logarithm and a matching base, it sort of cancels out. It's an inverse operation of the power. But, dot, 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 what if I asked you to do something like the log base 3 of 27? Again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video right now and maybe try these problems on your own and see if you can come up with something. Okay, I hope you tried something. Um, log base 3 of 27, well, the only thing that we really know about logs yet is that if the bases match, then maybe we, then we can use an inverse property. So right now the bases don't match because this is a 3 and this is a 27. So I need to express 27 as a power of 3 because the base here was 3. So I'm going to say 27 is just 3 to the question mark. Pay attention to what we're doing here. It may feel like simple, but we've done something very smart. We've taken a logarithmic expression and written it as an exponential expression. Now looking at this uh, and knowing your powers, or guessing checking if your calculator, if you don't know your powers, uh, you can tell that the answer here is 3, so that 27 is the same as 3 to the third power. Check in your calculator if you're not sure. Um, so we're going to take this expression and kind of solve it longhand. Um, although we suspect that the answer should be 3. 
Uh, but log base 3 of 27 is the same then as log base 3 of 3 to the third. And oh my gosh, there's a lot of 3s in there. But notice here we've got the matching bases. And it's saying, what is the power when the base is 3 of 3 to the third? Well, so the answer here is 3. That's the 3 that came from the power right here, or the exponent. Let's do the next one. Log base 2 of 4 to the third. So the exponential expression that we're going to try to solve here is 2 to the question mark is the same as 4 to the third. Hmm. So 4, I know, is 2 times 2. So 4 can be written as 2 squared, which is also that, which is still then taken to the third power over here. And exponent rules say that you multiply these powers. This is the same as 2 to the sixth. So that's going to, we suspect, going to be our answer. But let's rewrite it longhand again. So this is the same as log base 2 of 2 to the sixth. I'm just rewriting 4 to the third as 2 to the sixth. And we have matching bases. And here's my exponent. So the answer is just going to be the exponent. The answer will be 6. Again, here's some problems I'd like you to practice where you have to change the base of the argument to match the base of the logarithm. And then, as you can see, we'll get to the big idea of logarithms just below. But please do, pause the video right now and practice these problems on your own paper. And we're back. Check your work. Uh, we rewrote 49 as 7 squared, and the log base 7 of 7 squared is 2. We rewrote 25 to the 7th, as 5 to the 14th, and log base 5 of 5 to the 14th is just 14. And we rewrote log base 10 of 100,000 as 10 to the 5th, so log base 10 of 10 to the 5th is 5. Every time, rewriting these logs as an exponential expression really broke the, the case wide open, and that's going to bring us to the big idea of logarithms. And the big idea is this. If you have a logarithmic expression, like the log base b of a, and you say that that is equal to some number x, we don't know what it is. So notice that there's three variables here. The names of the variables are important in the way they switch around. This is exactly the same as saying that, so I'm using a double-ended arrow, that b to the x will equal a. So b is the base in both expressions. b is the base. In the power version or the exponential version, x is the exponent. Um, in the logarithm version, there is no exponent, um, but a here is the argument of the logarithm. So this idea of transitioning back and forth between logarithm form and exponential form is very, very essential. The idea is that some problems are easiest, best solved in log form, usually using a calculator, and some problems are best solved in exponential form, uh, which you can usually solve in your head. So depending on the complexity of the numbers and bases and what you're given, you will frequently need to transition from one form to the other form. And it may seem foreign and confusing right now, but the more you practice, the more you do this transition from exponential form to log form, the better you will become at it. Um, the rest of the video, I'm going to show you a bunch of tricks about how you're converting exponential form to log form. So be ready. Uh, we're going to do a lot of problems. Before we do all these problems, I wanted to go back and look at this log base 10 for a second, um, because you will never, ever see outside of this video someone write log base 10. What you will see instead is people write just log. How many zeros? Extra zero. So uh, the reason that no one writes 10 is that when you see the word log and there is no base here, uh, and that's not a zero, there's just no base here, this is called the common log, and the base is 10. The reason that the common log is base 10 is because we use a base 10 number system. So uh, this 10 to the fifth is correlates with our number system, our place value system. Uh, it's one of the most 
essentially commonly used logs, which is why it's called the common log. And if you look at your calculator, uh, you will see one of the two log buttons is just log. That's the common log base 10. Um, there's another log button, LN, the natural log, that has a base of E, which is a very cool number. But uh, you might have to stay tuned for another video for us to learn about natural logarithm and the log base E. All right, now we're going to talk about rewriting statements in uh, equivalent form. So we said that sometimes switching from exponential form to log form or log form to exponential form can solve a problem. Um, right now there's no problems to solve because every single one of the statements that's right here is already true. So this is just going to be practice at switching the form around so that when we get to more complicated problems, you're used to it. Um, number three says the log base 2 of 32 equals 5. Well, this is asking us in exponential form to translate into saying that 2 to the fifth is equal to 32, which is another true statement. These are equivalent forms. 7 is saying log base 9 of 5. 59,049 is 5. Man, that's a big scary number. Um, I'm glad I'm not actually solving anything. This is already true. So all this is asking me to do is write it as log, uh, no, not log, it's already in log form, as 9 being the base to the fifth equals 59049. And that one I like to check. I, I really do. So I'm just going to type in 9 to the 5th. Oh my gosh, it's true. 11, we have a fraction. Well, that's kind of awkward. All right, so we got log base 2 of 1 over 1024 equals negative 10. Um, notice, by the way, I'm putting parentheses around all of these. This uh, sheet, and like you'll see this, doesn't do parentheses around the argument. You should. It's helpful, uh, especially when things get complicated, and your calculator does parentheses, so you should as well. Uh, anyway, 2 is the base, and this is saying that 2 to the negative 10th is going to be 1 over 1024. That's, again, something I feel like I want to check in my calculator, so let's try it. 2 to the negative 10th. And again, this is giving me something in scientific notation. That's what that e to the negative 4 means. It's times 10 to the negative 4. So let's see if we can convert that to a fraction. Hey, there we go. All right, next. This is the section where it might start to get a little uncomfortable and foreign, because now we're putting things into logarithm form, which when everything here is a number, you would never really do but we're going to practice it anyway. So 8 to the third is equal to 512 is a true statement. If we saw this in logarithm form, the base here is 8, and we would write it as log base 8 of 512 is equal to 3. So we're transforming something into logarithm form. Um, one way that you can think about this, if it helps you, if you're a very algebraic solver, is that what you're really doing is taking the log base 8 of both sides, and this side, the 8 and the 8, uh, reduce out because they're inverse operations, just leaving you with 3. If you're less of an algebraic person and you're more about uh, sort of learning the shapes and the rules, then maybe this that uh, solving version may not help you, and you'd, you'd rather just transform directly. Both ways are fine, as long as you are able to convert those forms. Um, 5 to the 4th is equal to 625. Again, if we do something like take the log base 8 of both sides, or log base 8, if we take the log base 5 of both sides, because we're allowed to take do anything to both sides of an equation, um, we will get something like log base 5 of 625 equals... Four. And on the last one, 8 to the negative first is 1 eighth. I'm going to do this without doing the, the algebra thing. We'll do this with the shape rule. Uh, the base is 8, so we'll write it as log base 8 of 1 eighth 
equals negative 1. Because 1 eighth is 8 to the negative 1. That's the definition, which is the true statement they gave us over here. So converting exponential equi like equations that are just true with no variables to log form is weird, um, but it's good practice for the next set of problems. Here's an exponential equation. It says 5 to the x equals 27. Now, if you know your powers of 5, you know that 5 to the first is 5, 5 squared is 25, and 5 to the third is 125. So 5 to the what equals 27 isn't going to work with just a whole number plugged into the, the exponent. We're going to need to do some solving to get the exact answer. So, here's what we do. We take this and rewrite it in logarithm form. The base is 5, so we'll write the log base 5. This is the part that goes inside the logarithm, so the log base 5 of 27 equals x. If we were trying to solve this backwards, write this in exponential form, it would be uh, 5 to the question mark equals 27, going back to the very start of the video. And that's the same thing that we have written over here. So, excuse me, log form and exponential form really do match. But what's nice about the log form compared to the exponential form is that everything is on one side. This whole thing you can plug into your calculator. Um, for today, we're not going to do that. We'll consider this solved because this is just a number. And whatever it is, we'll call it log base 5 of 27. It's like an irrational number. It's not something that's going to uh, repeat. It's gonna, something that's going to repeat. It's not something that's going to, you know, be a nice thing. So we'll just leave it as log base 5 of 27 for today. Uh, 4 to the n minus 2 equals 3. So if you see this, please put big old parentheses around this. Um, the base is 4. So we'll write log base 4 of 3 is going to equal n minus 2. And oh my gosh, it's like solved, right? This is just a number. Um, and so if we wanted to solve this for n, the only thing that we would have to do is add 2 to both sides. So let's do that. The final answer here would be log base 4 of 3, and this is why it's really important to close your parentheses, my uh, plus 2, because we're adding 2 to both sides, would equal n. And so this is a true solved logarithmic equation where all the numbers are on the left side and all the variables are on the right side. And this is something that your calculator can easily evaluate. Another place that you're going to see these log equations is in word problems. Um, we've done word problems with uh, exponential increase or decrease before. It's kind of like the unit problem. Uh, today I just have two sort of naked equations. Uh, I would be interested if what kind of word problem you think could match these equations. Um, this first one is going to be exponential growth, because the uh, growth factor here is greater than 1, so when you multiply by a number greater than 1 a whole bunch of times, x times, something is going to get bigger. And we might be looking for when uh, a population of 1,000 rabbits growing at 15% each year is going to eventually equal 25,000. Well, the first thing to do is going to be divide by 1,000. That's just algebra. And all those zeros will cancel out, so we really are trying to solve the equation. 25 is 1.15 to the x. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of weird to have a decimal here. We haven't really done decimals before, but it's going to work the same way. So the base here is 1.15. So log base 1.15 of 25 is going to equal x. And I would consider this problem solved. You could evaluate this in your calculator if you wanted, if you had to report the exact answer, but this is solved. Anyone with a calculator can press these buttons. You've done the hard part. You've done the solving, the evaluation. This is just, this is just crunching numbers. So this is done. Uh, this next equation this might model some kind of exponential decay or decrease because this number is less than 1. Uh, it's 78.78. 78. 
So this is maybe like a decrease of minus 22%. Um, something is losing 22% of its value every year. Uh, and you want to know how many years it will take for that really cool new uh, $1,000 car. Yeah, $1,000 car, sure, to equal $600. Um, and it's losing a lot of value because it's a $1,000 car, so it probably isn't that great to begin with. As before, we'll divide by 1,000. I didn't mean for 1,000 to be the number of both here, but that's an interesting coincidence. So here we get uh, 6 tenths equals 0.78 to the x. So the base here is 0.78. So you will take the log base 0.78 of 6 tenths. And that will equal x. Whatever this is in the calculator. Uh, that's what the x value will equal. We'll do another video showing all the different ways to evaluate these on the calculator because it depends on the model of calculator you have. If you have a fancy one, um, like the one that you see on the screen, you can put it in in one step. If you have a less fancy one, it's totally fine, but you have to do a couple more steps. So uh, we'll treat that in a separate video. I hope today you've enjoyed learning about logs. Um, it's a little bit tricky. They're a little bit foreign, but the math behind them is really just exponents, and they're a powerful tool for getting an x out of a power into some place where you can solve it and work with it. Um, and most log expressions don't have that many steps, so once you get familiar with the changing of form, you're going to be able to solve a whole bunch of log problems very, very easily. Um, please practice all the problems on that sheet. It's posted online, uh, or it's, I gave it to you in class. Uh, I believe the assignment was to do the whole right column, but if you feel like that's not enough and you'd like to practice more, then please do more problems. Uh, doing these problems is the best way to learn them, so do some problems. Have a great day. I will see you all next week.